and welcome to Straight Up Shop. I want to thank you for shopping with us and tuning in. Um, again, I'm your girl, Latoya B., and I'm going to be your moderator. Straight Up Shop, we're a podcast where we discuss many different topics from life situations to even those unfortunate circumstances that life tends to throw at us. Now, tonight, we have my girls representing. Um, we have Aubrey. And she's going to be bringing diversity and why it's so important, followed by my girl TK, and she'll be discussing youth guidance. Now, straight up shop, we are powered by No Sense Media and Bodyguard TV. So, let's make it make sense. So, Aubrey, how are you doing this evening, sis? <laughs> I am good. How are you? <laughs> I am good. I am good. Um, so, I know we're going to be talking about diversity. And I know this is a topic that's very, you know, passionate and, and very important to you. Yeah. And so, as I always say, this is straight up shop. So let's just get straight to it. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> as she indicated, um, my name is Aubrey Williams. I'm one of the hosts here. Um, so before we get started in talking about diversity and going deep into it and things of that nature, I want to pose a question. What does diversity mean to you Toya? Um, so when I think of diversity I think of um, not average you know I think of um, uniqueness you know um, and boldness you know anything that's diverse you know it takes a boldness to be outside of the norm of what people tend to believe you know um, especially when you're talking about um, different races you know what I mean um, the diversity of that, you know, di when you say diversity, it's a wide topic or a different, you know, explanation of, of it. I mean, there is no right or wrong answer. So that's right. what I'm asking. So thank you for your mm -hmm. <laughs> definition. <laughs> Be pride. What, what, what does diversity mean to you? Well, diversity to me means that, you know, when we, when we talk about, uh, people's perspectives and their opinions and, their choices in life, learning how uh, the one way to be diverse with that is just being able to respect and show appreciation for what everybody has to bring. That's what I, that's how I view diversity. Okay, mm -hmm. so we got living in boldness. Mm -hmm. We got respect. Um, mm -hmm. We got a lot of different personal beliefs in regards to what diversity actually means. Um, the real definition of diversity is the state of being diverse or in other words if you can be pretty much just simple and cut cookie cutter straight with it variety mm. right mm -hmm. so since we've kind of all got that understood and everybody knows exactly what diversity is given i have another question why is it so hard to be diverse and included in the black community who wants to take mm. the time out to tackle that question? <laughs> I, I know for me, it, I think it starts with, you know, just the lack of unity. Um, you know, we don't unite. So when it comes to something that's diverse, um, it's hard for us to, to see it, you know, to bring it together as far as, you know, diversity. You, people who are diverse, it's like, or in my opinion, maybe, it's like a rebel. They're different. They're not the norm. It's, you know. It's, it's their own option to be whatever they, you know, choose to be or whatever it is. Um, but I think it's just a lack of unity within our community is one of the reasons why we don't embrace diversity as well as we should. Um, do you think that it, is it a part of ignorance or is it the, the fact that we just don't know? I think it's a lack of uh, knowledge. Um, you know, some of our people aren't as educated um, on the diversity, depending on what specific topic you're referring to when it comes to diversity. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's just maybe a lack of knowledge, not necessarily, you know, some people just don't know because they don't know. Yeah. Okay. You know? Cool. Anybody else want to take a um, Me? I, I actually feel like it has something to do with segregation. I mean, mm -hmm. if, you look at, if you look at diversity, like you said, it's a variety of things. Right. Um, and in the black community, diversity or variety has been looked at as it's different, it's not wrong, that's not our culture, that's not what we do. So introducing a new way or a new form of diversity to the black community as a whole, right. um, just from years and years of oppression and segregation, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like 
we have to take that mental step to actually want to, you know, learn about diversity. Mm -hmm. You know, actually accept the fact that it's out there, you know, because we live in a world where we're not going to run into everybody who looks like us. It's diversity. It's universal. Yeah. Come on, universal. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody else? I think the older generation has instilled in us that, like, to be closed-minded. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our elders and maybe our parents or whoever it may be, you know, I think they're stuck on, well, this is what I was told, this is what I was taught, this is what it is. Instead of being open-minded, we in like a whole new generation yeah. where mm -hmm. technology is taking over and the list can go on. Right. And it's like they still don't want to see what reality is. They want to continue to be closed-minded. Yeah. So I think if we were a little bit open-minded as a whole, mm -hmm. instead of being so quick to separate ourselves or pinpoint out the person that's different, we'll be a better culture together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. Um, so I have <clears throat> a quick... Um, Kind of like statistic that kind of reached out to me when it, when, I, when it came to us talking about diversity. Mm -hmm. And it states that the percentage of homeless teens that identify as LGBTQ+, plus, um, it's about 42%. So we have a lot wow. of homeless teens in this world that are homeless because of who they identify as. Who they have come to terms with, who they are comfortable with being. These children are pretty much out on their own, homeless. The kicker to this when it comes to the black community is 31% of that 42% are African American. Mm. Mm. So as a community, what are we doing? Are we really for the whole Black Lives Matter movement? That's what we're doing right now, right? We're fighting for justice. But we can't fight for justice for these children who just want to be themselves? Most definitely. Mm -hmm. How is that fair? Make that make sense. All right, that's why I go back to what I initially said when I said, um, you know, just the boldness, the courage that it takes to stand out and separate, right? Mm -hmm. And not necessarily that I think people who are diverse are, um, they want to separate themselves. They naturally want to be welcomed and embraced, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I just think that um, the courage that it takes to do that, um, not a lot of people possess that, you know, because they're already fighting the battle of being accepted or, you know, and then to have the boldness to step out, it, I can see that being difficult. Very Especially difficult. by our people when we tend to knock stuff that we don't understand, you know. Um, we don't embrace it as easily as we do. We're so quick to judge something that we don't understand. Right. I mean, especially if you put a time limit on, you know, your child's life in your home you know well by 18 you already expected to get out you know but then on top of that because i'm accepted or i've accepted myself this way now i'm now it's another detriment of why i have to get out right it's not anything positive so the black community in my in my opinion we really have to accept the fact that we have work to do ourselves like yes it's a fight for justice you know bringing up black lives matter but at the end of the day, you know, there was just another transgender woman killed in Dallas, mm -hmm. you know, just for being transgender right. by people in our community. But this isn't, it's not, it's, it's not talked about, right. you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's agitating because at the end of the day, I know we can, we can say we have different reasons to why we are the way we are. But at the end of the day, it's a saying, if you were born poor, that's not your fault. But if you die poor, that's on you. Mm -hmm. You feel know I me? Mean? It's, yeah. it's mm -hmm. the same thing when it comes to right. the black community and accepting that, hey, the world that you live in is not what you know. You know, it, it's so much bigger than than just. We have to we step ha away from that book. E exactly. Pretty yeah, much. Pretty much. We just you know? have to step away from that book. That book that you guys live by. Let's talk about basically the things in that book that you don't even do in your heterosexual life. If that's the case, nobody will be doing any type of. If you're married, you wouldn't be trying to step out on your marriage. Right. Point. Parents, you wouldn't yeah. be provoking your children when it says honor thy mother and thy father. Right. So if you're if you're living by these biblical things that you are trying to please him with, he's not being pleased. Because at the end of the day, if we if we really want to be technical, the book is all about love. If you know about love, 
you should be able to display it the way that it's given in this book. Right. If you don't know about love, then this is, it's not really and truly going, you know, phase you. And when you say the book of naturally, you're referring to the Bible? The Bible. Uh. Right. I don't, I don't mean the book. Oh, okay. That, you okay. understand what I'm saying? I hear you. I mean, so it's like, I don't, book, so, yeah. so I just feel as though everybody is living in this glass house and trying to throw stones. And we can't throw stones when majority of the percentage of these children not having a house are in our own community. So before we try to go sweep in front of somebody else's door, let's pick up all the trash right in front of home. ours. Mm. Right at home. Right. Mm. And so this really takes me back to, uh, to my experience, my senior year of high school, dealing with the, the guy that my mom was dating at the time. Right. Man, him wasn't saying eye to eye. She allowed him to put me out. So I had to find a place to live. Right. So that I could finish school. If I end up having to go through summer school to finish school and all these type things. Mm -hmm. So I got thrown out over something petty. And so it, it and for that to be something petty and put me in an awkward situation, I gotta go from house to house trying to find somewhere to stay, it's just even more baffling that your child can't come to you, mom, dad. This is where I am. This is how I'm feeling. Will you will you walk with me through this? Yeah. Will right. you help me through this? I know you may not understand it, it's new to me too, or whatever the case may be. Right. You know, we, we don't take time out to really sit down and talk to our kids unless it's something about their career and right. which career path they want to go down. And making sure that you finish school. Their part. But when we're talking about sitting down and talking to our children, one person that I admire right now, I will call him the GOAT. He's the GOAT in my book. Dwayne Wade. Okay? Yeah. I'm sorry. Most if you yeah. don't feel the same, I could care less. <laughs> this man has really embarked a new type of respect that I have for him as a African-American man. Right. Number one, you're raising a transgender daughter in the public. In the midst of you being a well-known NBA player, your wife is Gabrielle Union. People are always in your business, but you have taken out the time to say, this is my house, this is my child, and I will accept her for who she is. Right. And I'm also taking the time out to talk to my children and understand the culture so that there will not be any mispronouns or there won't be any lack of misunderstanding when it comes to that lifestyle. Right. I'm all in because I'm loving unconditionally. Right. This is what he said, quote unquote. When I decided to be a parent, I decided to love unconditionally, not conditionally, but unconditionally. Sometimes people take that for granted. Mm. We as a community, We've taken that unconditional love and we've taken that for granted. It's conditioned. We've conditioned unconditional love. How can we condition love when we say, I'm ready to have a baby? Right. You make that commitment with your husband or your boyfriend or whomever. But the moment that this child is not growing up on the levels or the highs or whatever you have pictured out for this child, then we go into an un we go into a conditional love state. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna love you with condition. And honestly, just to just to to back you up on that, that's a lack of accepting your true emotions because you know you're forced to believe a certain way. Oh, I gotta love unconditionally, but damn, this is my child in my home, and I don't agree with this from my perspective. Mm -hmm. Right? That's a conflict of interest. Like you're now dealing with your faith and your emotions. You know, if, if those two are at fault, you have no stability and then your judgment is off. That's why so much, you know, conflict now within the community. So, so it makes me think, well, are your feelings really your feelings or are your feelings feelings that were predicated upon you? Precisely. How many people are actually sitting back and really expressing how they authentically feel? I just got, you know, mm -hmm. talking about DMX, whether he was yeah, authentically okay. wrong or authentically, authentically right. Either way, all in all, that man was authentic, no matter what demons or whatever he possessed. Yeah. So to your point, when we're talking about expressing how you truly feel, mm -hmm. 
is how you is, is it really how you truly feel or are you just uh, regurgitating what you've heard mm -hmm. in the church and I'll, I'll just say that you know as a parent I can't imagine that day that um, him and that Dwayne and Gabrielle and his other mother um, had that discussion with with their child about these feelings that he have of feeling different than what they you know thought that he should feel um, I can't imagine how what that conversation was um, and even for me I know it would definitely be different um, I think that it is important as a parent that you guide your child not necessarily to what you want them to be right mm -hmm. Um, but that's why it is important to have those conversations because if at w whatever point he was feeling different, um, yes, naturally don't shun him, you know, have a conversation. Uh, I don't fully understand it all. I just know that um, you definitely have to get more educated, yeah. you know, when it comes to that because um, the k kids are cruel. And, and just him feeling different or him believing, you know, or him whatever that ownership that he wanted, to, he or she decided to take, um, I, I can't really judge that, you know. I just know that for me as a parent, I know that it is my duty to guide my child accordingly because they still are children and they, they don't come in the know right. Is how exactly. I feel. Right. But once they get an adult, you know, once our children become grown and then they're more knowledgeable, um, then maybe it's more of an understanding at that point, right? Yeah, right. I, was, I agree with you on that because me personally, like I've had the conversations where I'm an advocate for Dwayne Wade, but me personally, I don't believe in like my child telling me at you know 11 or 10 years old that you feel as if you're a different way. Why? Because of logic, because of reason, because I know you haven't even experienced you know having intercourse with somebody. You know, you're not, you're not even learning about sexual education in school, right? But as an advocate of the community, I know it as, like, as a parent, it is my responsibility now because that is an interest of my child. Right. So I'm going to educate myself. That way I can educate you. Because if this is obviously something that you're feeling, right. I know if I guide you in the right direction when you're older, you're going to be able to make a sound decision. And I'm going to know that that decision is real because of what I did. I didn't have any influence, no biases right. you know, when, I'm, when I'm helping you. So I agree with Absolute, you that. Absolutely. But again, it, but that boldness, like you said, with them living their life in the public eye mm -hmm. and trying to go through that and because of the backlash, because of people, you know, who aren't educated um, with what they're going through, um, you know, tend to, to judge. And so I, um, I, I can't imagine being in those shoes. Yeah. Well, this is what I can say about it. <clears throat> and I've heard you out, and I'm going to answer your question with that as well. Mm -hmm. What Dwayne did, and, and, and when he broke everything down when he talked about Zaya, mm -hmm. he basically said, at the age of three, I looked at my wife at the time and I said, what if? We both looked at each other and we were like, what if? So he, he prepared himself to understand that if something was to go left mm -hmm. from the vision that he already made for his child, because he was at that time male, what 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 could possibly happen i need to go ahead and prepare myself so at that point he began self-educating he began to stop using certain offensive words towards individuals if this could possibly be someone that's living that lifestyle mm. so he corrected it before it could even get to a bitter moment mm. we wow. as a community need to do that we need to self-educate yes. Like Definitely self-educate. It's, it's a stock market. Right. Make right. sure bet ahead of time to set yourself up in the future. Hello. Right. Come and we're going to hold that right there. <laughs> so, we're going to hold on. that right there. We definitely uh, appreciate you for getting to that, you know, being transparent and getting into that topic. Um, right now, we're going <laughs> to cut it short. We're going to take a quick commercial break. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. We at A. Nicole Entertainment Management Group strive to bring your vision to life by helping serve all the needs to assure you have a successful event or presentation. We specialize in booking venues, managing budgets, negotiating contracts and fees, booking performers, managing events, personal assisting, event branding, and more. quick and
and tell you guys that diversity is something that's very difficult that we're dealing with as a culture, but it's here to stop today. What I want you to do is if you're having those issues, call the LGBTQ National Hotline at 1-888-843-4564. Talking about diverse issues and helping these teens get the housing that they need is very imperative. If it can be able to help me, I know that it definitely can be able to help you. Guys, have a great one. I love you. Bye. Welcome back. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with us. This is Straight Up Shop. And real quick, I just want to take a moment and thank our amazing sponsors, uh, Yala Coordinators, as well as A. Nicole Entertainment. And so thank you to our sponsors. Now, um, we if you're just tuning in with us, you just missed an amazing conversation with my girl Aubrey regarding diversity. Um, but we're going to kick it into second gear and got my girl TK on deck. How are you feeling, Whoop. sis? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> now, TK, I know, I know that, um, yes, the goat here. Um, I know that this topic is definitely near and dear to you as well, that you're very passionate about um, youth guidance. Um, I know it's you. You know you have experience with that, being that you're a mother. Um, so again, as I always say, this is straight up shop. So let's get straight to it. <laughs> Thank you for bringing me in. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, Talk to them, sis. Youth guidance. So I remember growing up, and we can go to our neighborhood rec center, or we were even either in um, free after school program. Mm -hmm. You realize I said free? Right. I, the boys yeah, and yeah, yeah. club used, mm -hmm. yeah, used to be free. Everything used to be free. YMCA? Right. Free and slapping. <laughs> new generation, new rules, Yeah. <laughs> new cost, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what about the poverty and the youth and them not having the right connects? Right. What about them being in school and you send your child to school for them to take care of them? Right. But at the end of the day, Say you can't get them because you don't get off until five. You can't afford a daycare. We used to have those free after school programs, whether it was the rec center, the school, or even your friend. You know, you was able to go to a friend house. But you can't do that today. Why? Like, why, why do y'all feel like we can't send our kids to, well, first of all, the number one thing is cost. Mm -hmm. After school program costs $600 for a third grader. Mm. No matter of fact, it was, I would say, a first grader because my son is about to be in the fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And before I moved him to Cedar Hill, we were in the Bedford District, and I paid $600 for him to go to after school program. Mm. Wow. Well, as you mentioned, sis, um, free is definitely the key word there because, you know, even with me growing up, um, I was at one of those free facilities along with yourself, you know. Um, I think um, one of the issues is that people... Um, it's all about profit, right? It's no longer about right. helping the youth, guiding the youth. It's about, you know, what's in it for me? How much can I make? Or, or you know, we can capitalize off these children instead of them just being here and receiving the free meals and the free care, right? Right. Um, and so unfortunately, yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely about the profit. And that's where we've kind of got lost, I think, with the guiding our youth. Um, because a lot of parents can't afford to send their children to those, you know, after school programs uh, like they could whenever it was free. Mm -hmm. Right, so then we have the kids that can't go to after school program. They can't go to daycare because they're too big. They can't afford the recreational center or the Boys and Girls Club or the YMCA because they're, they cost too much. So that's my problem because I have a boy that's about to be nine. Right. And it's like now we're living in a pandemic. So got laid off. 
I can't send them to, to my neighbor's house because I don't talk to my neighbors. Right. Right. So I don't trust them. I can't send them to the rec because now the rec, you, oh, your kids can't come until 10 o'clock, but what about me having to be at work at 7? Right. Mm. So where does that come to play, you know? Right. So, like, it, it hurts me because I want to be the centerpiece for the youth. I know what I had growing up. I know what kept me on a straight line. Right. What, like, what can we do as a community, as a whole, as Straight Up Shop to help these youth? Um, honestly, I feel as though that even tie that into what we talked about in diversity, we got to unite more. Mm hmm and we have to really, those principles that we have issues with or those situations that we have issues with, we have to address them head on. And we have to really and truly make sure that, you know, these kids are the main focus. They're growing up after us. It's not anything that's before us anymore. Mm -hmm. Once you get up into age and you're mature, you're there. Right. You can't go back in time. But we right. can correct time by making sure that these children know right from wrong, know what to do, know all of that good stuff to make sure they're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was, I was going to say, really, keep them close, you know, because at the end of the day, like you say, I mean, with you being a single mother, having a, a male and other children, right, there's going to be other influences that's going to be brought to your child because you're not always going to be there, right? right? That's why mm -hmm. I say always, like, keep them close, keep that communication open, right? I was, I was, I remember coming up and I was being told, like, Stay away from the adults, the grown up table. We don't want to hear about that right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yes. We're doing all <laughs> no, this. Seriously. You know, but it you can see like in the later years, it's it's more so I'm I'm used to doing things myself because that's how it's, it's how I was raised, it's how I was mm -hmm. built, you know. But I feel as if with the youth coming of age and now they don't have we know that they don't have access to the same resources and everything that we once had. And right. I feel like J. Cole, you know, because I'm little bro and big bro all at once. Because right. I was actually at the point to see the ships. Because I remember after school programs, I remember, you know, getting in trouble at school. Teacher recommended that I go to the Boys and Girls Club or, you know, get, give some, some constructive criticism, you know, take his time and his energy. And honestly, that helped me, you know, because I had more time on my hands to do constructive things versus having my eight or nine to ten year old mind just ramble like what can I do right, right. all these other things coming so just keep them close mm -hmm. and true right, right along with the programs I remember uh, going to uh, the boys and girls club and they had you know couldn't afford a tutor right. so back then the tutors were free you go to the boys and girls club whatever they subject matter that they that, that, yeah, that existed true. you go in there sign up you get free tutoring with your math, your science, whatever. And they give you a snack. Right. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> no, seriously. You feel me? Chills. <laughs> Ram, crackers. Yes. All yes. of it. Play a little pool, a little ping pong, anything. You know. Once you right. done with your homework, you get to go play this sport. Right. Yep. Exactly. Basketball, push, game. A push in the right direction. Right. right. And you guys, so real quick, we have a question from our viewers I want to pose to the panel. Um, so, if youth guidance was different back in the day, and what ways can we reinforce youth guidance if kids are raising kids and don't know how to guide themselves? Like, well, like I say, it's, with me personally, because like knowing the older generation, and this is something that I've heard a lot, but you know, like, oh, kids having kids, you know, she 20 having a baby, mm -hmm. but we're not growing up in the same world that you grew up in. Absolutely. Right? You know, it's, it's a whole different world. People are growing up a lot faster, but I feel like it's a level of empathy, a level of compassion that we need to have. We can't just be like, well, back in my day, like, mm -hmm. and then, you know, that's trauma between you and whoever that child is because it's like, well, you have You're it not all, your you know, <laughs> exactly, right. you know, well, I'm trying, like, I'm literally living in this time now, like, that doesn't help me. Right. Like, I feel like, keep them close, you know, guide them, as you say, mm -hmm. connecting other topics, but guide them, you feel me? So, you, you speak about the older generation, so, when I was coming up, you know, we had the, what we call the village. Mr. Johnson, Miss Johnson down the street, they saw you getting into something. They either hitting that phone, <laughs> calling mom and dad, or they whooping you, then taking you home so to get two more whoopings. Right. So I ain't gonna be able to whoop them you know. Right. <laughs> so there was a there was a sense of uh, trust in the community for the most part. And as we get uh into this generation, most parents don't want you saying nothing to their child. Mm -hmm. So what I think is that if we could take the old generation and the new generation, merge them together or sit them down at the table, 
can figure out and write out a plan as to how can we make this work? How can we mix a little bit of old school with a little bit of new school to make sure we have a village in our community where we can raise our kids effectively and make sure they're safe on, in all measures? I think that, I mean, it will be one, a one up, if you say. Mm -hmm. right. I think yeah. that's just too close to right. Right. Like, I think we'll get right there and then we'll be like, Oh no, like it ain't worth it. Because that's what they do now. Right. They don't take the time out to like encourage the kids, like make them smile. Like you never know what smile might make that little baby's day. Right. You know, right. you never. And that's my True. thing. Like so, having my son three months early, him passing away for six minutes, they telling me to prepare for his funeral. I feel like I had to build the courage to stand up for my son because he don't have a voice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like. I just really feel six like six minutes. Six minutes, my baby was blue and purple. Mm. It took twelve wow. nurses to hold him down so they could bring him back. Wow! Mm. But I just became able to talk about that story. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Because my baby's gonna be nine years old. It haven't brought me anything less than A B honor roll. Right. When I think about, mm. um, man, <sighs> my, your strength is to be admired uh, for real. Okay. Um. You know what I mean? Um, Go for real, for real. Not knowing? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. The, the, that. Yeah, that's definitely deep. Um, but when I think about, and I don't want to put you on a, on a block there, and because uh, I'm not sure how old you were when you had him, but when I think about, like, kids raising kids, you know, for instance, my, my daughter's 20, and, you know, I have uh, my Super G grandbaby that I absolutely love. He's precious, but anyway. <laughs> um, when I think about my baby only being 20 and having a baby, so you talk about babies raising babies and how do they guide their children because, you know, they're young and some of them, luckily my daughter has me and her grandmother, her aunts, her, you know, she has her family support. But what about the kids who have kids at a young age and they don't have the support of anyone and they're trying to raise right. and guide these, you know, young children and that epidemic, like that is something that is really out of control. How do we fix that? That goes I mean, back to the structure of the black community. Mm -hmm. Because I can I can literally hear people like watching this right now. Well, my kid and my child ain't what we, but think about it, right? Now, let's just switch your perspective. Go over to the Caucasian community. Like, they have a daughter, 20 years old. She has a baby. It's a whole celebration. Why? Yeah. It's somebody added to their legacy. That's true, yeah. bro. That's you true. Me? Now, I'm not saying go out mm. here and, you know, get pregnant at 20 years old. 20, but yeah. if it happens, it's not like it's not shunned as a bad thing. Right. Right. A baby right. is a blessing. Keep yes. Absolutely. That's yes. true. Anytime. Yeah. 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 You know I mean? It's a hero's journey. At the end of the day, you can't control what life brings in front of you. All you can do is embrace it. Right. And that's what we got to get back to in the community. Oh, you just had a baby. Like, we know life is hard. We know that the system is set up to, you know, make life harder for us. Mm -hmm. Let's embrace that village aspect. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Because now we got a community of people. This is another life that we get to take care of. Right. There's, mm -hmm. there's no telling what this baby could be. Key right? word, we. Yes, right. we. Yeah. Precisely. Because ain't nobody else taking care of nobody else's baby but us. Right. Even if and it, it, even sometimes it pisses you off to see somebody else's child acting up because of who we are as people yeah. and culture. Mm -hmm. And and you know what? Seriously, you guys, um, the other weekend I was out eating. And while I was out, I was passing, you know, my fellow sister and her two children. And when I tell you it was frustrating to me because I don't know their situation, but all I know is like he really, really needed a haircut. You understand? Mm -hmm. right. And and I don't know why she was okay with her son being in public looking like that because it was bad, y'all. Y'all know what I mean when it's bad, right? Yeah. Oh, but, of course, I can't say anything to my sister because who am I to? And then there will be a wall up, right? But it, it's even that thing where we can, we should get to a place where we can kind of correct people because sometimes people just, I'm not saying that she didn't know, but. What do you do whenever you see something and, and it bothers you and you feel like you can lend a hand or you can help? Like, And that mm. goes back to diversity, though. That goes oh back to goodness. us be, becoming open. That goes yeah. back to us being closed-minded. Like, we have to go back to being able to accept criticism. Mm -hmm. Right. Good That's criticism. It. That part. That's yeah. it. That's um, exactly what that is. I just feel like we get away from that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we forget. We want that, all good. Nothing yes. Yeah. And that goes back to right. what we talked about the week before when we sweep stuff under the rug. Like, mm -hmm. we got to get away from all of that. And there's mm -hmm. general curse, generational curses right. that right. we 
our generation have to start breaking. Yeah. Right. And like right. Have to. That's true. <laughs> and so I'm just saying, because we could go real deep when it comes to the generational yeah, stuff, about, right? Right. But we're going to hold that thought uh, because we really need to cut to a commercial break. So if you'll just stay tuned with us, okay. we'll be right back. <laughs> So a year ago today, I was suffering with postpartum depression. Just had my little girl after almost 10 years, actually exactly 10 years of having my son. It was tough, but she motivated me. So I decided to get fit done. Yes, you are my muse. Ah, ah. Yes, and mommy getting fit done. So I decided to get up every day, look myself in the mirror, no matter what was going on, no matter how I was feeling, I was determined to be a better version of me for not only myself, but my children. of who you are inside and out, everything else will fall into place. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. We at A. Nicole Entertainment Management Group strive to bring your vision to life by helping serve all the needs to assure you have a successful event or presentation. We specialize in booking venues, managing budgets, negotiating contracts and fees, booking performers, managing events, personal assisting, event branding, and more. You know, being able to explore all the possibilities of your imagination, that is what being a creator is. Being a creator is awesome because it opens up endless possibilities when it comes to creating the next big story for film or the story for the stage or the story for television. You know, it's, it's kind of allows you to open your mind to a lot of things. You know how hard I work for my career. And I'm not going to let anything or anyone come between me and my career. I'm the highest paid and the most powerful woman in my division. Going to school for script writing, shadowing other writers and directors and producers out there, going to acting classes, <laughs> all things I never had. I basically taught myself how to write and act by YouTube videos, reading books, you know, reading a couple of scripts, all the things that taught me how to become a very great, powerful writer. Corte Entertainment have produced many productions from talk shows to stage plays to short films, feature films, and web series and still producing more to this day. 
So many people out there think they cannot write a script. I say yes, you can. All you need is determination, motivation, and a story. Stories are all around us. Watch the news, read the newspaper, read a magazine. Your next big story is right there. Your next big story could be right there in your family. The name I Am Corte comes from simple. I am Corte. I am Corte, the founder of I am Corte Entertainment. It's your host from Straight Up Shop, TK. I'm here to let you all know that you are not alone. And if you ever need any youth guidance, feel free to head over to www.theyouthalliance.com. There you will find national hotline numbers for mental health disorders, postpartum depression, they even have teen to teen mentorships. Reach out. There's someone there to help you. If you guys are just now tuning in with us, you have missed some amazing conversation. We had a topic on diversity and why it's so important for my girl Aubrey as well as followed by TK with Youth Guidance. Now, right now, you guys, this is our final thoughts. If there's anything that you want to share with our viewers that maybe you didn't get a chance to, you know, or you got cut off because of commercial break? <laughs> <laughs> that we, the shade, okay? That you want to address? <laughs> That's production. This will be a great time. So, with that being said, again, we have... <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, yes. So, I just know with youth guidance, I want to become that centerpiece to bring our youth back together, to bring the young fellas out of the hood, they call it, or whatever whatever case the case may be. I want to be that person to start. Like, it start with us. We're the year of entrepreneurships. Like, this is us, you know? Mm -hmm. right. So, it's like, they always say, lead. We got to be the leaders of the new generation because now they're they be, they're looking at us. Our mom is about to be 50, 60. Right. right. You know? So I just think that us as a community, us together, like we need to start coming together more. We have to. Or what is it going to be? Right. Right. They are trying to take the kids out of school and just put everybody solely on virtual. That's not going to work for people take that away. need that special attention. Right. right. Yeah. Especially if, if you... If your child is ADHD yes. or ADD, their attention span sitting in front of that computer like that. Or even um, autism. Yeah, or yeah. autism. You're right. And that's def definitely difficult. So, yeah, there's definitely a system that needs to be put in place for those children. For sure. Uh, yeah. Not to mention you know, the I, ones that school is their escape. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, that part. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. From those, if, and sometimes going back to those teens, that can be the only meal that they get. That's exactly yeah. the lunch right. and the breakfast. That's I it. know friends. That was, that's what that's what that was. You Didn't know? even know what they were going to eat right. when they got off. You know. Right. It's. I really want people to understand that <clears throat> the trauma that you have in your life shouldn't be your child's trauma. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The trauma that you have in your life should not be your child's trauma. So whatever we need to do as a community, we need to think about counseling. We need to think about having those open discussions and being that open window policy for those kids if they're having those type of feelings or situations or even want to be curious about them because they've seen them on the television screen. It shouldn't be the first thing that you say when something is not the norm. Oh, you shouldn't be watching that. Right. Yeah. That shouldn't be your first response. Mm -hmm. What it should be is, what is it about it that you do not understand? Right. Yeah. So that I can be able to help you understand it. Mm -hmm. Right. I agree. Respectfully. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just for me, I feel as though as black people, we need to really and truly think about getting our trauma in line. In line. 
identifying that we have, have it, trauma. right? Yeah, and, and it's, it's not, not even that like at this point that we don't identify it because a lot of people know that they have it. They just keep going because they're comfortable and they've right. learned how to live with it. Or mm -hmm. the fact that they speak on it, but then nothing's ever done about it, so then they suppress it. Mm -hmm. Happens a lot in the back of it. Which is why you should have accountability. Mm -hmm. Be accountable. Mm -hmm. what you about did it. it. What, about, what right. they say? If you knew better, you do better. Hello. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, yeah. So with, with my final thoughts uh, with diversity, I feel as if it starts starts at home. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I feel as if once we begin to open and accept that the way that we live our life is not the way the world lives life. You know, I feel as if we're gonna start to see a better a better world, in my opinion. And this is just me. If what you believe is conflicting with your child's beliefs, maybe you should question what you believe in. You know? Because there's, we should question everything. That's the thing that I feel as if everybody should do. Because if you're not questioning anything, you're not growing. There's no growth. Mm -hmm. You're not learning nothing. That's my mindset as well. I mean, really nothing's off limits with me. I, I think about everything, well, everything, you know. And yeah, a lot of people don't like it, but it, it, this is my mind. <laughs> It's mine. Uh, if it's your child, this your child too? That part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, right. So as far yeah. as with, with the youth guidance aspect, uh, TK, she's, she's mentioned about how we are in the generation where the, the youth are, they're go-getters, they're entrepreneurs, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're cutting a new path. So what I think would be a great mode is what I mentioned earlier with the two generations linking together. Mm -hmm. You let the people, the go-getters, lead the way while you stand back here and you give wisdom along the way. Mm. See, the old generation don't want to be at the tail to push the new generation up. Mm -hmm. That's really where the gap is. We need that strength. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the old generation is what pushed us, though. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's our generation that need to push these new kids. Mm -hmm. And see, these new, this new generation, these kids, they don't want to listen. Shout out. They don't want to talk about it. They know everything, which is fine. But I also think that we have to kind of catch up to where they're at because how they learn today is not how we learned back then. You know what I'm saying? Precise. So what, what works for them today or what works for us back then doesn't work for some of our kids today. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. this, genera this generation is a microwave quick. You know, we were kind of mm -hmm. like an oven. We got to warm up and get there, right? So I don't, I mean, I do hear you with that, but I think we also have to come to, you know, still have a standard, still have, you know, still guide them, but right. also we have to kind of make it quick. So even like for an example, when we talk about youth guidance and being in school, uh, when they were able to get, go in school, you see a lot of teachers standing up and, and putting music into the way that yeah. they educate the children. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean when I say we have to kind of catch up to them because no longer are these kids, this generation, sitting here being lectured. Yeah, I mean, the together had to be innovative. Yeah. The biggest yeah, difference right. that stood out to Some me way. with the school system with youth, there's school over Zoom now because we're starting to see the kids in this generation Technology based. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Technology based. Right. We can literally do everything eight hours over Zoom call, and these kids will sit down and look at the screen because we're in a different age. It's the inf information age, the age of technology versus the golden age, right? The human race where we were transitioning from, you know, just getting out of slavery to, to now getting into rights and now wanting to educate and going to college. But now, see, the timeline is now different. You feel me? So if, uh, technology really just helps us. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm going to say as far as diversity goes, uh, it's going to piss a lot of people off. I don't care though. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. You know, and, and I'm in the church, so I'm going to talk about the church. Right. When we talk about the L LGBTQ plus community, I want to make sure I got them letters right in right. order. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> I'm going to say this. If uh, LGBTQ TQ plus person is good enough for business and directing your choir, they're good enough for unconditional love as well. Exactly. Say that for the people I'm in the back. Because they didn't hear you. Say it one more chart. time. If they're yeah. good enough for business, Hello. they should be good enough for unconditional love. Minnesota. Period. Right. I'll be the word does you. say, judge not lest ye be judged. Hello. I, I don't care if you, right. you know, no. you got another family across, the, uh, across town. Mm -hmm. You're trying to hide that. I mean, listen, I get it, but on that note, <laughs> yeah, that's a whole nother topic. Hold on. I mean, on that note, I'm going to cut you. I'm just saying. Yeah. Right there. <laughs>
hang tight. Hold that. Hold that hand. Right now, we're going to go to another quick and final commercial. And if you'll just stay tuned, we'll be right back with Straight Up Shop. So a year ago today, I was suffering with postpartum depression. Just had my little girl after almost 10 years, actually exactly 10 years of having my son. It was tough, but she motivated me. So I decided to get fit done. Yes, and mommy getting fit done. So I decided to get up every day, look myself in the mirror. No matter what was going on, no matter how I was feeling, I was determined to be a better version of me for not only myself, but my children. of who you are inside and out, everything else will fall into place. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. We at A. Nicole Entertainment Management Group strive to bring your vision to life by helping serve all the needs to assure you have a successful event or presentation. We specialize in booking venues, managing budgets, negotiating contracts and fees, booking performers, managing events, personal assisting, event branding, and more. You know, being able to explore all the possibilities of your imagination, that is what being a creator is. Being a creator is awesome because it opens up endless possibilities when it comes to creating the next big story for film or the story for the stage or the story for television. You know, it's, it's kind of allows you to open your mind to a lot of things. You know how hard I work for my career. And I'm not gonna let anything or anyone come between me and my career. I'm the highest paid and the most powerful woman in my division. Going to school for script writing, shadowing other writers and directors and producers out there, going to acting classes, <laughs> all things I never had. I basically taught myself how to write and act by YouTube videos, reading books, you know, reading a couple of scripts, all the things that taught me how to become a very great, powerful writer. Corte Entertainment have produced many productions from talk shows to stage plays to short films, feature films, and web series, and still producing more to this day. So many people out there think they cannot write a script. I say yes, you can. All you need is determination, motivation, and a story. 
Stories are all around us. Watch the news, read the newspaper, read a magazine. Your next big story is right there. Your next big story could be right there in your family. The name I Am Corte comes from simple. I am Corte. I am Corte, the founder of I am Corte Entertainment. Welcome back. Right now, we want to thank our sponsors uh, for that commercial A1 Fitness, Yala Coordinators, A Nicole Entertainment, and I Am Corte Entertainment. And so, yes, we want to thank so much for our sponsors for that commercial. Uh, we're getting down to the end of our show. We thank you guys so much for tuning in and hearing this amazing talk on diversity as well as youth guidance. Um, but at this time, we're going to have a little fun with our panel here, and we're going to get into what we call straight up charades. So I just want to know right now, do I have any volunteers who would like to go first? Okay, see, ain't nobody say all that. I'll go first. You'll go first? <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay, bro. Will. So let's see if y'all can put this together. I'm going to do my best. And just for clarification, it may be people who are not on the show. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, okay. Uh, let me see. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm going to get it off of this one. Okay. Um. <laughs> now, this is someone either on the panel or staff or behind the scenes or anybody, right? Production. Oh. <laughs> it's the posture for me. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Don't be going back and forth for me. Or Tay. Wait. Lynch. Oh my goodness. Okay, guys. So I need you all here. Mister. Five, five. Gotta be Mister. <laughs> Mister. Yeah, I'm going with Mister too. It gotta be Mister. Is that Mister? Gotta be Mister. In Mister. order. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to see you continue, though. Yeah, you were doing I right. Did, yeah. I didn't want to say that. I was like, hey, he's doing good. He's doing right. right. <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> that okay. Good. Okay, so we're choosing somebody, either panel or staff, behind the scenes, right? Either or. Either okay. Or. You never know. Okay, okay. Either, I mean, you never that was know. Good. You never know. So we might as well just go this way. Yeah, okay. we'll just go in this way. Okay. <laughs> Listen, okay. if y'all don't know who this person mm. is, because I have a special name with this person. <clears throat> one line. One line in this. One line this One hit a quitter. What's okay. up, OB? What's up? <laughs> OB. Okay. 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 You know who it is. Why you waiting? <laughs> One line. OB. Yeah, who is that? Who says that? <laughs> who says that? I'm going to push you out the chair. Be proud. You know it was. Be proud. It's be proud. It's be proud. I'm about to open the call, OB. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. OB, what's good, man? OB. OB in the building. That's me. <laughs> Me All right, good job, good job, good job, good job. Grand Rocks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> let me see who I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna choose. You baby. Did he say Grand Rising? Okay. Um. <laughs> hmm. Here we go. Here we go. Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> I'm going to try to keep this to a minimum because if I start talking, then y'all going to know. Um, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. What is that? Uh-uh. 
I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> you know? Do you know? Do y'all need a little bit more hint? A little bit more. I think I already know. Okay, okay, okay. A little bit more. Okay, okay, okay. Bit more, okay. Bit more. <laughs> I didn't want you to keep going. Just right here. Just, just right here. Like. <laughs> Keep it right here. Just right. Is this what you need? Uh uh uh. uh. Straighten up them cups. Oh, that gotta oh. be uh. Kiss. Kiss. <laughs> Take the gum as a Only they yeah. Yeah. Know. I was you know when we were ready to talk it out, and you was like all them ums. All the ums. Yes. Yes. Y'all right. Do. Yes. But listen, if yes. they only really knew how our set really be back. <laughs> right, yes. Man. So that was my girl Keisha, absolutely. Yes, yes ma'am. Production. But she keep us on point. She keep us on point. <laughs> it's production for me. Okay. <laughs> y'all irking, because I feel like y'all got two good people down there. <laughs> and y'all better show out. <laughs> right. Go ahead. Cal. Find you a seat soon. Oh. Find you a seat who? Oh, I thought somebody said so. I know, I know. <laughs> I know what it is. Exactly what it is. You say what, mister? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Child. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Child. I'm working. We're going to say it together. <laughs> We all gonna say it on three. Oh, I know what it is. Oh, wait, y'all wanna say it on three? One, two, three. Corte! I was extra. Man. Corte. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We have boy, though. Yeah, so we have a few more quick minutes and we're gonna have it for Brian. Let's what's up. All right, all right. Oh. What? <laughs> oh, I know who that is. <laughs> oh, I am the celebrity. Period. Hey. Period. Period. What? Yes. <laughs> what? Uh huh. Yeah. Man, let's hurry up and get up out here. I gotta get home to my baby. Period. Oh, period. <laughs> man, yeah. so your girl going to the league. You understand? The league. The league. The league. Oh my God. The the on three. Like going over to the break some makers and I'm gonna lay some fools up. You understand what I mean? Period. Okay, I think we can say that together on three, two. One, One two, three. three. Two. The goats. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Come yes. On. Oh, man. Yes, 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 yes. That was good. That was good. That was good. Oh my goodness. So I just want to ask real quick <laughs> who who did the best? Who, who who did the best? I'm sorry. Who had the best impression? It was between you, you. down there. I, and oh, it's on this side? Oh, all of y'all was great. <laughs> great. I only had my one line. That's amazing. The whole thing. I can really do I love that. everybody's. I knew who who everybody had off of like the second line. So it lets me know we know each other. Right, <laughs> right. right. Other. Chemistry. Yeah. Right, right, right. Unity. <laughs> Diversity. Diversity. You hear yes. me? We're <laughs> leading by example. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, we got off track. Prediction. All right, so listen, I thank you guys for being really good. Per <laughs> really, really, really participating with that. And at, at this time, this concludes our show. And we want to give another thank you to all of our shoppers out there for tuning in with us. Mm -hmm. Again, this is Straight Up Shop. And I have my boy Senpai, Aubrey. I am Latoya B. TK, the goat, and B Pride. Yeah. And Uncle T is unfortunately not here with us on tonight, but we are thinking of you. We miss you, Uncle T. Yes, we do. Definitely. And so this concludes another amazing epi episode of Straight Up Shop, and we hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>